Hello, and welcome to Messages for Men, Part 10. You probably could have guessed, sooner or later, we'd be getting to Delilah. And there's a lot that can be learned about the nature of toxic women from one of the most known of them. But, like usual, we're going to need some context first. Before Samson married Delilah, he married a woman simply known as a woman in Timnah. Samson was so enraptured by this woman that no woman of the Israelites could compare in his eyes. Her words also pleased him to the point where he wanted to marry her. When he brings his parents to meet her, he poses a riddle to the Philistines who could not solve it. So what do they do? They convince this woman of Timnah to drag it out of him. So how does this woman do so? Judges chapter 14, verses 16 and 17 read, Then Samson's wife wept on him and said, You only hate me. You do not love me. You have posed a riddle to the sons of my people, but you have not explained it to me. And he said to her, Look, I have not explained it to my father or my mother, so should I explain it to you? Now she had wept on him the seven days while the feast lasted. And it happened on the seventh day that he told her, because she pressed him so much. Then she explained the riddle to the sons of her people. How infantile is this woman here? If you don't give me what I want, you hate me. And she drags on him and drags on him, until he finally just has enough. Granted, in this case, her own people threaten her, but toxic women today are just as infantile simply because they don't get what they want. Men, if your girlfriend is acting like this, it's only going to get worse, especially if she gets what she wants. It's best, actually, to leave, because you eventually want to marry a woman, not a child. Now let's move on to Judges chapter 16. The Philistines want to know how to defeat Samson, so who do they go to? Delilah, of course, who has now become Samson's wife. This time, rather than scaring her, they appeal to what most toxic women desire most in the world, money. We'll begin reading in verse 4. Afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the lord of the Philistines came up to her and said to her, Entice him, and find out where his great strength lies, and by what means we may overpower him, that we may bind him to afflict him. And every one of us will give you eleven hundred pieces of silver. So Delilah said to Samson, Please, tell me where your great strength lies, and with what you may be bound to afflict you. So many men have fallen due to their wives for far less money than this. But there is some humor to this. Three times he deceives her and humiliates her in front of her own people. Granted, a wise man would have simply bolted as soon as she tried to ruin him, but he was known for his strength, not necessarily his intelligence. Let's now begin reading in verse 15. Then she, that is Delilah, said to him, How can you say I love you when your heart is not with me? You have mocked me these three times and have not told me where your great strength lies. And it came to pass, when she pestered him daily with her words and pressed him, so that his soul was vexed to death, that he told her all his heart and said to her, No razor has ever come upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I have shaven, then my strength will leave me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. You may think it's cruel for me to say that if a woman does this or that, leave, but now you see why. A toxic woman will continue to press and dig at you until you finally submit, and when you do, she will no longer respect you. Is that any kind of way to live? Learn from Samson's mistake. It's better for you to be single. Much better. A continual dripping on a very rainy, rainy day, and a contentious woman are alike. Whoever restrains her restrains the wind 
and grasps spoil with his right hand. That's Proverbs 27, verses 15 and 16. Make no mistake, many women alive today are no better than Delilah here. So blinded by their own short-sightedness and selfishness that they bring ruin to everyone around them, but they don't realize, or worse, they don't care that it's their fault. Sure enough, Delilah got exactly what she wanted, and starting in verse 18 of Judges 14, when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the Lord of the Philistines, saying, Come up once more, for he has told me all his heart. So the lords of the Philistines came up to her and brought the money in their hand. Then she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him, and his strength left him. And she said, The Philistines are upon you, Samson. So, she awoke, so he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before as other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. A lot can be applied from God departing from him due to his wife's dragging him down, but that have to be a separate video. Nowhere in this passage does it show Delilah had any remorse for what she did. Toxic women can be irredeemable, and even if they aren't, who said that us men have to be the one to fix their poison? They need therapy, and if that doesn't work, they need to be alone, unable to harm anyone else. Thank you for watching, everyone. Have a great day.